Y'all want to know why I chose to go with the EOTech on the Mark 18? It's because my work one day said, hey, you know what? You should go out there and try to break one. And I did try. And I failed. It still holds zero. Also not sponsored by EOTech. In 1995, we got arguably the best holographic sight manufacturer in the world, EOTech. And that's today's manufacturer's review. Clint here with Classic Firearm, and yes, we're here to talk about electro optics technology, EOTech, otherwise known. And uh, that's our manufacturer review for today. So let's just go ahead and uh, end that video because what more do you need to know? Just kidding, all right. But the EOTech, like I said, since 1995, they've been around for just a few decades now, providing some of the most durable, rugged, accurate optics that we can possibly find. And as of late, they've gotten into a little bit longer distance game, but we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Like I said, in 1995 out of Michigan, EOTech was started. They've not just done, well, holographic sites like what you see right here. This was pretty much one of the very first mm, designs that was very popular and very successful, the 512. Now, granted, this one is actually the 552, which is the night vision compatible model. And what night vision means is that you can actually pick up the reticle under IR utilizing night vision. So that way you can actually still hit your target because you can see your reticle. So that's good, right? But anyway, EOTech has been doing some pretty awesome work for quite some time and is honestly the manufacturer that I go to for the optics that I like to run on my personal stuff, like y'all already knew, my Mark 18. I already talked about the 552 and the 552 is probably, if not their most popular, one of their most popular optics simply because you still get the rugged durability and well, the uh, quality of EOTech in this casing, in this housing that is this hologra holographic, but you get regular batteries that you can use with it. So a couple of double A's and you're all set. But if you needed something a little bit more compact, then you have the XPS series. And what I have on this guy is the EXPS series, which has the QD amount on it. It has just your standard circle reticle with a dot in the middle. So it's a 65 MOA ring with a little two MOA dot in the middle and also night vision compatible, but the buttons and controls are on the side, making it for easier use if you are utilizing one of their magnifiers. Magnifiers are cool because what that allows you to do is increase your range ultimately, because now you can actually magnify three power. I think they even got now a five power uh, magnifier, which is pretty cool. And you can get down on that. You can be able to identify your target a little bit better. And it also crispens up the reticle just a little bit more as well, which is pretty sweet. And if you're not using it, fold it out of the way on the standard mount. There's a lot of aftermarket companies that utilize or make different mounts for the G33, which is what this guy is right here. So if you wanted to have it kind of fold more down this way, it's not just hanging off the side like that, you can. Pretty sweet stuff, right? So very cool. Of course, the XPS is, well, that guy there without all of the buttons on the side, the buttons are in their standard positions that you see right here. The XPS2 that you see does have the night vision compatibility with this button right up top. And of course your adjustments for up and down right here on your brightness setting. Very easy also to adjust your shot placement, all right? Or at least your reticle. So you can see right here that you just use a flathead screwdriver or a bullet casing, whatever it might be, and just start making your adjustments. Very easy to do, very easy to side in. And these guys have, they have good battery life, but if you're comparing it to like a red dot, they're gonna be several tens of thousand hours shorter than most red dots because, well, there's a little bit more technology happening here. For instance, on your standard red dot, you're gonna have typically a little bit more crisper reticle, which is cool, a little bit longer battery life, but they are nowhere near as rugged or durable. For instance, if you were to break out 
a lens on your red dot, it's going to be pretty much useless. It's using reflectors or a reflecting image uh, to be able to actually pick up your reticle. If you ever look at kind of like your red dot in which it's where the actual reflector, the image being thrown out there is. So if you look at it from the front is what I'm trying to say, you'll typically see like a dot or just a little ring with a dot in it if that's the style reticle that your red dot uses. And you'll see that just being kind of projected on the lens. If that doesn't, if your lens is broken, it has nothing to reflect onto and therefore it won't work. However, you could bust both your objective and your optical lens and it would still work. And I know this from personal experience when we torture tested an EO EOTech XPS2. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, look at that. We got ourselves a shatter. How about that? And uh, from the outside, it doesn't look too bad until I turn it around and show you guys that even the outer housing here, I was able to warp it broke both lenses as you can see but maybe you can also still see that the red dot in there the holograph itself is actually working you might be able to pick that up i don't know but it's on there and you can see it granted i have a huge crack in the middle of my lens so if i'm looking directly at my target i can't really see my reticle so therefore i'm just going to assume i'm going to hit it if i do see my reticle i need to adjust to where i can't see it so there you have it all right but what really impressed me about this guy is even after i dropped one of our steel targets on it i threw it like a baseball i hit it i pretty sure at one point we caught it on fire i can't remember but anyway we did all sorts of crazy stuff to this thing and it held up. In fact, within 25 yards, because I didn't test it out to distance, I was still able to hit my target if I just adjusted where I could actually see the reticle. So you will have a little bit of a parallax shift there, but where I could see my reticle, I'd shoot and well, wouldn't you know it, I'd be hitting my target. Pretty impressive stuff. So holographic optics are gonna be able to take one heck of a more beating than your standard red dots. However, you are sacrificing reticle clarity because if you ever look at a holographic optic, they're a little bit more grainy. Now granted, for close quarters, stuff like that, they're pretty easy to pick up and I don't typically use a holographic for precision shots out to distance. Not saying that you couldn't, but that's not my typical use for them. As you can tell that they're on my short barrel guy here. I mostly have a magnifier here and throw a suppressor on there, but uh, I mostly have the magnifier on here just so if I need to see what's happening out there, maybe get a positive identification on a target that's out the distance. Again, rather have that magnification than not, but most of the time it's sitting there just like that. So yeah, I mean, if I wanted to go, you know, tactical, high speed, whatever, I can do that. Uh, but most of the time, like I said, magnifier stays out of the way until I need to identify something, look at something, whatever, all right? But yeah, they're durable guys. They're more expensive than red dots, uh, typically. Now sure, there are, can be some more expensive red dots out there, but nine times out of 10, your holographic, your base holographic is gonna be more expensive than your high-end red dot. It's just how it is. You're paying for that quality. You're paying for that rugged and durable durability. All right. Now they also too make some caliber specific ones as well. All of these are mostly 556. Five, you can throw them on a 308. Again, it's just a dot you're looking at. So just sight it in, you'll be fine. But some of them do have a bullet drop compensation. And another one that they make is 300 blackout specific. And one thing I really like what they do is they actually give you a 300 blackout zero for subsonic and supersonic ammunition right on the top of the optic. So if you ever have any question about, well, I'm at this distance, which reticle should I use or where should I aim, stuff like that, they try to simplify it for you right on top of the optic and I think that's actually pretty impressive and I like that quite a bit. And this guy here is just your standard XPS, it does not have the night vision capability. So if you wanted to save a little bit of money, you're not running night vision, stuff like that, then there really isn't any reason for the night vision capability. They have different offerings all over the place. One that I do think is kind of funny though that you don't see a whole lot of is a TAC-1 EOTech, which doesn't have that large 65 MOA outer ring. It just has a simple red dot. Don't see a whole lot of those because typically most holographics are the donut of death with the center dot, but it's just a simple red dot. It's kind of interesting. You don't always see that. But uh, anyway, holographics are fun. 
reliable, rugged, and recently EOTech has gotten into the game of distance. They entered their Voodoo line of optics for their LPVOs, their low power variable optics, 1 to 6s, 1 to 8s, and so forth. And I've heard rumors of, or maybe a Instagram post that shouldn't have been posted, 1 to 10. Curious. I'd be excited to see that, <laughs> Lucas. But uh, anyway, there are some LPVOs out there. And also, too, if you're wanting to go for a little bit longer distances, they have those offered. In fact, we've given away one before with Alex Zedra on a, well, Barrett 50 cal. That was a 3.5 power to 18 power EOTech Voodoo. Voodoo is their line of magnified optics. Look at it that way. Minus the magnifier. Just LPVOs and full power optics, I guess, if that's what you want to call them. But let me make some room here on the table and get a couple of these LPVOs out here because, well, I'm impressed by them. I like them a lot. I like their eye relief a lot as well. Say goodbye to the MCX one more time with the 552. And I like the different types of reticles that they use and the fact that they offer them in both both first focal plane and second focal plane. Like this guy right here, this is a one, two, six first focal plane optic. Now, on the SR-15, which is uh, a cool rifle, and you should head to classicfirearms.com to figure out why. Also with the CEO tech that you see right here. Voodoo, because it's the LPVO. One to six, first focal plane. Binary trigger, might be our current giveaway. Anyway. This optic here being a first focal plane optic or having the first focal plane reticle, what that means is not only are you magnifying in on your target, but you're also zooming in or increasing the magnification on the reticle and it exposes a little bit more information to you. Uh, so that way, if you are shooting at a greater distance, you can use the bullet drop compensation that they have, things like that. They're still illuminated reticles, still very cool. For me personally, first focal plane optics are always something that I've kind of been like, ah, don't know if I really like it, don't know if I do. I kind of like just having a stationary optic, or excuse me, stationary reticle, one that I'm not zooming in or out on, depending if I'm zooming in or out on my target. So, I don't know, it's personal preference for everybody. I do like this optic a lot. I just will say that I think this optic is actually better suited for low light. If it's super bright outside, I can still pick up my reticle and all, but if I'm on one power, picking up my center dot that I do magnify in on gets just a little challenging if I need to pick it up for quick acquisition. Granted, it has a very large outer ring, so it kind of makes up for that a little bit because just put your target in the middle of that ring and you're probably gonna hit it, so easy enough, right? And it's also an etched reticle. You don't have to rely on batteries to be able to pick up your reticle which is something that you do have to do with most red dots and holographics. Granted, there are prism optics out there that do have edged reticles that are magnified and stuff like that and illuminated, uh, but you don't need to rely on batteries to be able to pick up your sight, or excuse me, your reticle. And here we have the second focal plane, which means your reticle stays the same size, stays in the same position. There's no magnifying the reticle, no revealing any more information. What you see is what you get whenever you look down the optic and get your sight picture. So this one right here just has your standard crosshair and is a bullet drop compensation, it looks like, for one, two, three, four, about 500 yards. Pretty sweet, 500 yards on a 16 inch barrel is probably gonna be a it won't be a challenge, but at the same time, you're not getting that full potential out of the 5.56 cartridge anyway. But this is also a 1 to 8, so you get a little bit more power behind this guy, which is pretty cool. Still illuminated, again, still an edged reticle, don't need the batteries if I don't want to. So very cool overall. Now also you're going to notice on the LWRC DI that we have here, this little guy right here. This is the EOTech PEC 15. Now. Prior to 2020, EOTech was accompanied with L3 Harris Technologies, who did a lot. In fact, I have somewhere a EOTech that actually has L3 technology on the side of it. It's an older EOTech. And uh, 
their work. They're pretty cool, but they recently separated and have gone elsewhere, but they're still holding a great name, still making quality products. Just some uh, funny news though, in 2015, the United States government did sue EOTech for some civil fraud, but I guess all that kind of got worked out because just three years later in 2018, uh, EOTech was awarded like a 26, $27 million contract for the United States Special Operations Command. So, I mean, I guess everything is okay. So, <laughs> but anyway, you can just always Google that and do a little bit more search for you on that end. But anyway, you're gonna notice the PEC-15 I have right here on the DI gun. This guy here is pretty cool. Now, I do like the PEC-15 if it was full power. This right here is what's called the aiming target at PLC, right? So this is the civilian model, low power. So you can, you do have a visible and an IR laser, which is pretty cool. You also do have an IR illuminator. However, unlike on the full power model, which is limited to, you know, US military government sales, stuff like that. Sure, you can still find them out there on the market somewhere, uh, but Unlike the full power model, you can't adjust your IR illuminator. Compared to other illuminators and IR marking devices on the market, you can adjust your illuminator so that way whenever you're looking through night vision and you're activating the illuminator, it pretty much projects uh, like fake light downrange and illuminates that area even brighter for you to pick up in night vision, which is really cool. However, I like to be able to put my IR dot in the middle of my IR illumination, and you can't really do that if your zero is outside of the center of the IR illuminator, which it most likely is because that is not completely in line and no optic or reticle will be, or laser will be completely in line with the barrel because it's not aiming down the chamber. So. I don't know, nitpicky, maybe, but at the same time, me personally, if I were to get a PEC-15, I'd probably just go with the full power model and have at it, right? Go full send always. So very cool little optic, however, that the Voodoo line is. I love the holographics, of course. Enjoy the magnifiers. The magnifiers have a little bit shorter eye relief than I would like. But at the same time, if I'm just trying to get positive identification on something, again, look at a bad situation that might be happening downrange, or, oh, cool, that looks like a pretty bird or something, I don't know, whatever. Don't aim your gun at things you don't intend to kill, right? Or destroy or whatever, but you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, the eye relief on it, not the best, okay? But at the same time, it does what I need it to do, and I'd rather have the magnification and not need it than to need it and not have it, much like any of these firearms. So anyway, EOTech is great. They're expensive, yeah, but you get quality products. They're great people. We've talked with them at a couple of different shows now. Hopefully, we'll be back at a show again soon. Fingers crossed for SHOT Show 2022. <laughs> we'll see how that goes, but uh, anyway, let us know down in the comment section below what are your experiences with EOTech. If you've actually used the EOTech brand downrange in a combat scenario or anything like that, how did it perform for you? I'd love to hear from our service members that have actually got real life in the crap type of experience with these optics because, well, these are military contracted optics. At least the HWSs, the holographic weapon sites are. I haven't heard of any of the voodoos actually being fielded downrange, so there's that, right? However, when it comes to the LPVO system, I gotta tell you guys, I think EOTech is my favorite. Granted, I love a lot of other companies out there, but I, you've heard me nitpick just a little bit about the reticle, but if I were to go for that second focal plane one to eight, I think I'd be very, very happy with it. And speaking of which, you could actually take this one home. This again is the one to six first focal plane with the American Defense Manufacturing Mount. This is on the Knights SR-15 to really flex on everybody that doesn't have a Knights, which would include me. B5 Systems SUP Mod Enhanced Stock there, Magpul MOE Grip, MOE SL for that slim grip. All right. And uh, one thing that's super fun about this guy is the fact that, yeah, it's got a Fostec Echo Trigger in it. It is the sport trigger. And what that means is, 
Well, when you pull the trigger, it goes bang. When it released the trigger, it goes bang. So head on over to our video announcing this as our current giveaway to see this guy in some mag dumping action. Don't miss out on that. And yeah, of course, it's coming too with a uh, 60 round drum because, well, pairing echo triggers and drum mags just, it just makes sense. All right, peanut butter and jelly. That's, that's how it goes. But anyway, classicfirearms.com is where you can get your entries in for this guy. Don't miss out. Go ahead and utilize that code word that you see at the bottom of the screen right now to get you a couple hundred extra entries on this. Don't miss it. I know you guys are gonna love this guy. Mm, it feels great. And again, congratulations to our winner of the PE90. I know you're gonna love that thing. All right, I'll end it off there. Classicfirearms.com is where you can get your entries. Again, don't miss out. Comment down below your experiences with EOTech. Again, mine has always been very favorable, and that even includes when I am completely demolishing them. Sorry guys. By the way, I don't think this is gonna fall under their warranty. So, I guess I'm just stuck with this broken optic now. What a shame. No, you're not getting one of these. I know a lot of you guys have asked me already, I'll take the broken optic, you know, it's, it's mine. I have much pride that I can damage this this much and the fact that it still works, pretty cool. All right, I'll end it off there. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.